Yo, how's it going, everybody? It's the Masked Man. I know it's been, it hasn't even been that long. It's only been a week, but uh, due to how often I try to upload on the channel, I guess a week is a long time. Now, during that time span in which I was gone, I was able to read Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Re, something that has been recommended to me a lot due to, I think, its controversial nature uh, coming from the anime. Now, my first experience with Tokyo Ghoul was from the anime, and it was only a few scenes here or there years ago, but I never really got into the series. If I were to describe Tokyo Ghoul's feel, to anything else I've read, it feels extremely chaotic. I think that's the word when describing Tokyo Ghoul. It is extremely chaotic when you read it, as characters enter the story, and then they leave the story just to come back 30 chapters later, and sometimes that's done to tie in loose ends and uh, used to kind of advance the plot and narrative of the story at times. Now, Tokyo Ghoul overall, its artwork, I think, fits the story. I think it fits the style Tokyo Ghoul is trying to go for, and honestly, has had some of the most beautiful and impressive panels I've seen from a modern work. There's a lot of parallels and things that will strike you extremely similar from Tokyo Ghoul to Tokyo Ghoul Re, as the author seems to throw in a lot of subtle hints and a lot of subtle messages through those minor details and parallels within the artwork. Now, Tokyo Ghoul, throughout its chaotic feel, can be a little bit overwhelming and confusing when it comes to the fight scenes, and so when I look at Tokyo Ghoul due to its vast amounts of exposition at times throughout the story, which depending on who you are as a person might be off-putting, although if you are a fan of Hunter x Hunter, I don't see exposition being a problem, but again, due to that vast amount of exposition and like I said, its chaotic style, especially during the fight scenes, Tokyo Ghoul theoretically should work better as an anime, but based off of what I've heard, that is not the case. Now, I tried to split up this video by Tokyo Ghoul and then Tokyo Ghoul Re. Everything I said beforehand applied to both, and I was thinking when talking about the narrative, I should just do Tokyo Ghoul and then Tokyo Ghoul Re, but I don't want to. I'm just gonna kind of encompass it all into one big story, although sometimes I will make the distinction. Now, Tokyo Ghoul, I think where it struggles a little bit is in the narrative and the plot of the story due to its chaotic nature and things kind of being all over the place at times. And while Although I don't think that inherently is a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination, as I think it keeps Tokyo Ghoul's pace and energy very high action throughout all of the manga, I think once you reach the climax of the story, without a more smooth build-up process, it can make the climax feel a bit rushed, which is something I noticed especially when it came to the finale of Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Re. Another thing I think Tokyo Ghoul uses to its advantage, but at times not enough, is the ability of contrast. Being able to have something so beautifully light and something so bleakly dark that when you put the two next to each other, it feels like there's been some giant development done within a character within the story. Kaneki, the protagonist being the perfect example, not only from his character, but again from an aesthetic standpoint with the whole black and white hair changing. Kaneki being so on and off with how his character can be can seem off-putting, but I think again, I think it works for what they're trying to do with his character. As Kaneki, when we meet him, he's such a gentle, such a kind person, but then when he's finally pushed past the point of no return, and it's something to really behold within the manga. Kaneki's development is kind of like when you hit freshman year of high school, and then you hit junior year. Like, the way you are freshman year of high school and junior year of high school, at least for the most part from what I've observed from not only myself but a lot of my homies, it's a completely different switch. You know the one meme where it's like, I'll have her at home by 9, sir, to she calls me daddy now? That's exactly what Kaneki went through. And now that I think about it, Kaneki's very sporadic and drastic shifts in character, I think truly pushes the overall chaotic feel within the narrative, as it seems whatever Kaneki's character acts like or does, the story seems to follow. But something that upsets me a little bit when it comes to Tokyo Ghoul, and this is mostly with its backstories and the side characters, is at times it feels extremely melodramatic. And I know a lot of people like to use the word edgy, whilst although I do think edgy in and of itself is a proper term to use when describing Tokyo Ghoul at times, I think that's only when it's at its darkest moments. Overall, I would say melodramatic is the much more appropriate term to describe Tokyo Ghoul 90% of the time, as every single character goes through some sort of tragic backstory. And I'm not trying to say that there's anything completely wrong with this, as it kind of sets the overall tone within the world of Tokyo Ghoul, and it sets up everything beautifully thematically, and that is something I will give credit for is Tokyo Ghoul thematically is brilliant. The only thing I have an issue with when there's constant, like almost every single character within the series, it's predictable 
that they have had some sort of tragic outcome within their life. And this is what I mean by a better use of contrast, as I think there is a huge appreciation for characters such as Hyde, uh, Kaneki's best friend, because he seems to be this glowing candle within the darkness. And so I, I just would have wished that there were more characters such as him implemented within the story, or that there were more moments where Hyde was present, as I think again him being in and out of the story, mostly out of it, is a little bit disappointing. And honestly, I wouldn't have that much of an issue when it comes to these tragic backstories or tragic feel Tokyo Ghoul tries to go for if things actually ended tragically for more of the characters. It feels as if the grand majority of those that should pay for their actions in the end don't end up really doing so, and a good amount of characters die in Tokyo Ghoul, so don't get me wrong, but at times when characters you thought were dead aren't dead, and the characters you think would suffer the consequences of their actions never really seem to, they just kind of realize what they were doing was wrong and then quickly change it, and you can't justify it through some sort of parallel between that character and the protagonist. It's just some side character walks up to the bad guy and is like, hey, you should stop. And that character's like, oh yeah, I should stop, and then that's it. It, on, it feels like such a, a lazy way to just wrap that up, and I personally didn't enjoy that. Uh, here I'm speaking mostly to the ending of Tokyo Ghoul Re. And so I kind of hinted at it, but for me a lot of the side characters within the story are usually hit or miss. Mostly more hit than miss. For instance, Juzo is one of my favorite characters in the entire series. Despite him having, again, an extremely tragic backstory, he seems to have much more of a comedic, upbeat personality, which is something I really do enjoy in a world that has a very down-in-the-dumps, lonely, again, melodramatic feel to it. Having an upbeat character like Juzo, who's equally as psychopathic, but upbeat nonetheless is, again, enjoyable. Now, something I'm... Uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm in favor for it. Well, I am in favor for it because I'm happy in the way that it turned out. But as for the actual writing and everything between this, I'm very indifferent. And that's Toka and Kaneki's relationship. Because I've seen this whole, she hated his guts, but he ended up in hers. Again, that's like Berserk 101. So I've seen this done and executed in a much better way. And that's not to say that Toka and Kaneki's relationship isn't a good one. I just, maybe I'm just desensitized to it. And that's why I feel feel very indifferent um, and it's mostly because of Toka when it comes to Kaneki I I'm happy for him you know like it's like a homie who finally succeeded you know it's like yo I'm happy for him but when it comes to Toka especially in Tokyo Ghoul I can't stand her I, I, I really can't and even after her backstory and her having daddy issues and again just wanting to be needed by somebody else is an understandable motivation, uh, but what really throws me off even more is how different she feels in Tokyo Ghoul Re. Like it just leaves me extremely confused. And I will say that the ending of Tokyo Ghoul to the start of Tokyo Ghoul Re caught me so off guard and I thought it was a good thing because it left me extremely intrigued. But I think the potential that Tokyo Ghoul presents at first ends up kind of being rushed near the end, but that's nor here nor there. Back to Toka and Kaneki's relationship. It Toka just feels like such a weird character for me, and I feel like there needs to be some explaining done. Because I get everything about her thematically. Again, thematically, Tokyo Ghoul does things brilliantly. I just don't. I, it feels really weird the build up in the relationship between her and Kaneki, and I think that's due to again what I brought up earlier, the story jumping around a good bit. And I think also it being in Tokyo Ghoul, how Kaneki's biggest moments of character development and change happen when Toka isn't really around, and then Toka's just there to witness the end product of whatever development Kaneki just went through. That might be part of the reason why things feel a little detached for me here and there, but overall I can't say I dislike it nor that it is bad. Tokyo Ghoul overall is a story due to everything that I've mentioned. I, I hope I've made it clear that it is a, it's a story where you have to really either stay on track or it's going to lose you with how often it really tends to jump around, with how fast paced the story can be at times, through how just overall just over the top the climactic moments within the story can be and how crazy it seems characters seem to change, especially between Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Re. And so despite a lot of the things that may have sounded like negatives within the story, I must say I really did enjoy the story overall, again due to its thematic brilliance and a lot of the things that Tokyo Ghoul presented in top-notch fashion. Kaneki is definitely one of my favorite protagonists in all of manga. I really enjoyed everything and all of the ups and downs that happened with his character. Uda is one of my favorite side characters, although what they ended up doing with him felt a little bit out of nowhere, if I'm going to be honest. 
and it's a story full of twists and turns that if you enjoy it, it's going to leave you extremely engaged and quite satisfied with everything that happens up to the climax. Now as for the climaxes of the story, they're definitely going to feel rushed, but as an overall story, I think if you ever mention things along the lines of Dorohedoro or Attack on Titan, Tokyo Ghoul should also be thrown in that conversation easily. But as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Also, if you are new to the channel and you did enjoy this video, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, that way you're notified whenever a new video pops up on some of your favorite anime, manga, or whatever content. As always, this has been The Masked Man. Hope everyone has a blessed rest of the day, and peace.